This video is part of the IELTS Express series, the two-level series from Thompson ELT. It accompanies the upper intermediate level. A second video accompanies the intermediate level. We're here today to talk about the speaking module of the IELTS exam and which skills and techniques students need to develop to be successful. We asked an experienced IELTS examiner and teacher, Ranald Barnacut of Barnet College in North London, first to examine eight candidates at different levels from different nationalities, then to analyse their performances in each part of the speaking module, and finally to assemble a range of extracts to illustrate these skills and techniques. Tell me about the IELTS speaking module. Well, it um, consists of three parts which place rather different demands on the candidates and it's always a one-to-one -one interview. However, um, there are general criteria which apply to all three parts. There's um, fluency and coherence to start with. This um, involves the ability to speak without too much hesitation or pausing to correct one's own mistakes. I mean, it's good to do that but too much gets in the way of communication. And you should also speak at a proper speed so that you don't put a strain on the examiner by speaking too slowly or too fast. Could you explain coherence a little more? Basically, it means connecting your ideas in a structured way so that the listener can understand what you're trying to say. And this way, you can also avoid repeating yourself. And what about grammar? I imagine that's pretty important. Yes, very much. Candidate structures should be reasonably correct and they should show that they can use a lot of different grammatical structures, some fairly complex and not just the basic ones. We call these two factors accuracy and range. And, of course, the same things apply to vocabulary. How about pronunciation? I imagine it's not very satisfactory having brilliant vocabulary if nobody can understand what you're saying. Absolutely not. And not only do candidates have to get individual sounds right, like distinguishing T and TH, T and TH, for example, they also have to stress the right word in a sentence and use an appropriate intonation. Examiners want to see evidence that candidates can use appropriate intonation, for example, whether they're asking a question or making a statement and also expressing their feelings. So if the intonation is rather flat, it can express lack of interest. In part one, the candidate has to answer a number of questions about themselves, their hopes for their future, their education, or their jobs, any hobbies they may have, or sometimes customs and lifestyles in their countries. And what should candidates focus on when answering these questions? A major element is extended responses. That is, not just giving one-word answers or answering with just a simple phrase, or sentence. Let's show Danilo from Italy as a good example of this. Hello, um, my name is Ronald Barnicott. Um, can you tell me your full name, please? Uh, my name is Danilo Guarini. Uh -huh. And uh, what shall I call you? Oh, Danilo, Danny. Okay, Danny. Um, where do you come from? I come from Italy, mm -hmm. uh, from the south of Italy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, so um, what I'm going to do first is ask you some questions about yourself. And I'm going to start with your studies. Uh, what are you studying? Um, at the moment I'm doing um, a, co a foundation year at mm -hmm. Barnett College because I would like to go to university hopefully next year. Mm -hmm. And I'm studying um, a course of IELTS, an IT course and a general English course. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to study at university? Um, I would like to study U uh, European studies. Um, which involves politics, uh, international relations, mm -hmm. and um, um, and 
poli yeah, politics and international relations. Yeah. Yes, I see what you mean. He didn't give much information about himself or his part of Italy to start with, but he does go on to describe his studies and what he wants to do in some detail. And I'm quite impressed by his vocabulary. Yes, um, involves, for example, is quite a, a formal word, but it's very useful in an academic context or talking about one's studies, as Danilo is. I have to say, however, that he becomes a bit less fluent at the end. Mm, he hesitates a little too much, doesn't he? Daniel is another good example. Notice also the way he becomes more involved in the conversation by smiling. Let's talk about music. Um, do you play a musical instrument? No, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your favourite kind of music? It could be folk or, or country. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. So in my country it's very popular folk, folk music. Yes, but I'm reminded about what you said about intonation. It is a bit flat in Daniel's case, isn't it? Candidates should have a rising and falling intonation. It makes them sound interested and engaged in the conversation. Very flat intonation can make the candidate seem bored and uninterested and can have a negative effect on the listener. Is there anything else you can suggest? Fillers. It is important that candidates use these to fill the gaps in conversation. They also buy them time to think. Phrases like, anyway, or, you know, actually, etc. Here are some common ones. First of all, boya. I want to choose because I like to be a producer in the future and to do some programs for people. What do you find most interesting about your subject? Um, I think as produce programs, mm -hmm. the process when, when I do it, and I think I can find some interesting things in it. Boyer uses, hmm, I think. Now, watch these clips of Panil. What are you studying? Well, right now I'm studying English. It's uh, an English relation course. It's a one-year course. Um, yeah. <laughs> Why did you decide to study that subject? Well, um, I want to become an actress and I want to study here in London, so I want to perfect my English and I thought this would be a good course. And also I get uh, practice in taking the IELTS which will um, show what level my English is at. What kinds of music are most popular um, where you live in Norway? Um, probably uh, American and English pop music, mm. yeah. Well, in the first one, she uses well a lot, and in the second, she uses yeah. The yeah is interesting. Um, she's using it to show that she's finished speaking. In this part, the examiner asks the candidate to talk for one or two minutes about a topic, usually about their personal experience, something they've seen or done, somewhere they've lived, a person they know, or a thing they own or would like to own, this type of thing. Do candidates choose their own topic? No. The examiner gives the candidate a card about a specific topic with four points that he or she must cover. The candidate then has one minute to prepare what they want to say. In fact, many students use this time to make notes. It helps them organise their ideas. OK, let's move on to the next part. Um, I'm going to give you a topic to talk about for one to two minutes. Um, before you start, you will have one minute to write some notes, if you wish. Um, and first of all, I'm going to give you some paper and a pencil for your notes. And here is your topic. Um, I'd like you to describe how you would like to spend a free day. And this is Daniel's card. So the candidate has to explain how they would like to spend the day, what they might do, and who with. Also, they must give a reason or reasons. 
different. Of course, the candidate may need clarification about what he or she has to do, and Daniel asks for it. Okay, and can I ask you, can I choose everybody who I want to spend the day with? Yes. All right, then. Thank you. As does Panil. I'd like you to describe how you would like to spend a free day. Okay. It's a like um, here in England um, at this time, kind of. Any time you like. Okay. So Daniel asks if he can start by describing the person he wants to spend the day with, and Peniel wants to know if she has to talk about a specific time or place. That's right. If a candidate is not sure about the instructions, it's a good idea to ask. That way they can be more confident that they are doing the task correctly. And what kind of notes should the candidates write? Well, there are two main types of notes. Firstly, there's linear. You just make a list of points to cover. And then there are word webs, as they're sometimes known. Candidates can, of course, write whichever kind they want. But many people prefer the second kind because they say it's easier to think of ideas that way. You start at the centre and move outwards. One thing which is helpful is to include a list of keywords, vocabulary which is important and which will impress the examiner. Any advice for when candidates start speaking? Yes. Sound confident and look at the examiner. It helps sometimes to give a brief summary of what you are going to do. Right. I'm going to tell you about spending a day with my parents. It also helps, when you are writing your notes, to visualise the scene. What do you think of Panil's description? OK. Um, well, I would like to go to uh, get up early and go to a park, like Hyde Park or something, and have a picnic with my friends. And we would stay there all day um, and uh, everyone would bring something to the picnic. And. Um, then we would just sit there and talk and have fun and have some friends who play the guitar, so they would play the guitar. And uh, we would just talk and uh, stay there until late and have, have a bar barbecue as well. Yes, we can certainly imagine the sort of day she's describing. It's well visualised. And what about her vocabulary? A bit simple. Yes. It's good that she knows specific words like barbecue and picnic, but otherwise the words she uses are very high-frequency items and the repetition is noticeable. Talk and stay there are each used twice. What about Danilo? We usually have lunch uh, out when, when I have uh, free time, when I have, have a free day. And um, after having lunch, uh, we, we carry on shopping around and uh, having a stroll. He uses stroll and shop around. Yes, so all in all, he's got a good range of vocabulary, from the formal word involves, which we noticed earlier, to these rather informal expressions. Let's hear their comments afterwards about this part of the exam. OK, so um, what I found helped me was that um, I visualised the scene when, um, when I was talking about my day, my free day. And I could actually see myself sitting in the park having a picnic and then I could kind of grasp the details of what I wanted there. So that really helped me. And um, what I didn't do was uh, write down um, key words and vocabulary. Uh, and uh, I found that I repeated myself quite a lot because I didn't do that. And also I kept my language quite simple. I didn't say any big words. So and I thought I should have. And uh, also writing key, uh, keyboards helped me remember uh, what I had to say, like um, having a stroll, um, uh, writing, writing it down, it helped me to remember it. So I think it's really helpful. I'd quite like to hear a whole part too. All right, here's Danilo. 
All right. Um, when I have a free day, um, I like to go to central London. Um, I usually go with my girlfriend. Um, um, we usually go to Camden Town, um, where there's a big market. Actually, there are two or three markets. Um, I like shopping around and uh, looking at the different things that they show there. I uh, also like going to Oxford Street and Lexa Square. They are really different from Camden Town. Um, and that's why I like of London that it's really um, different. You can find different, like diff two or three cities together. Um, we usually have lunch uh, out when when I have uh, free time and when I have, have a free day. And um, after having lunch, uh, we we carry on shopping around and uh, having a stroll. Um, Um, I like to go to the centre because um, I just want to, to have um, a relaxing time uh, and not thinking about working or studying or doing anything else. Um, just doing uh, what I want to do, really. OK. Um, so um, do other people that you know um, like to spend the day in the same way? Yeah, I've got some friends um, who I, I, I work with. Um, but we usually go out uh, during the night, or the evening. We go to um, to some pubs in, uh, in central London. And sometimes we go shopping or just looking around. Well, that seemed to be pretty well organised. What did you think of his grammar? A good range and quite accurate. Yes, he uses after having lunch, some friends who I work with, so he uses quite complex forms. What about his pronunciation? Very clear, but again rather monotonous intonation. Perhaps he needs to sound more lively. Yes, as we mentioned before, speaking with a rising and falling intonation pattern will make you seem interested and engaged in the conversation. Part three is a question and answer session, but more of a discussion based on the topic of part two. Candidates have to be able to cope with questions about the environment, educational system, and in general, issues facing either their country or the world. So it's more abstract. Yes, and it helps to know what is going on in the world. What if a candidate doesn't understand a question? Well, just like in part two, he or she should request clarification. Let's see how Boya does this. Now people want to have more higher educations because they want to get a um, good job, so they don't have much more time for leisure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What effects on society do you think any changes in the ages at which people retire might have? Sorry. Um, well, um, there's talk about changing the law about retirement age, yeah. uh, making it possible for people to retire later. OK. Um, what effects will this have on society? Oh, so you mean is um, the retired age for people in this society? Yeah. Um, what I know in China is people probably at age 50, mm -hmm. they probably will retire. And what will candidates be asked to do? To express an opinion. 
appropriately introduced by I think or in my opinion etc and backed up by evidence. Let's see what Danilo uses. Do you think that people generally have enough leisure time? No, I personally think that um, nowadays people don't have a lot of free time and they... He says, I prefer to think. Now, Boya. Talking about the opposite of leisure, that is work, do you think that employers should encourage employees to work overtime or discourage them from doing so? I suppose not to do that because it's better to encourage them um, to make them let them know what they want to do and they can do it by themselves to work harder and to make the work better. Mm. Yeah. She uses, I suppose, but we are looking for a wide range of expressions such as I really believe or, or what I think is. Another thing a candidate may have to do is evaluate, to make a comment or decision on how valuable something is, how important or useful. So do you think that the change has been for the better or for the worse? I think for worse, mm -hmm. because of relationships and uh, Anyway, to a few people had a contact with nature and mm -hmm. um, they just spent the time with, with new, new technology, like I said, the computers and television. Mm -hmm. So Daniel doesn't think much of the way we enjoy ourselves these days. Evaluation, I suppose, is another way of expressing an opinion. Is there any other way that they will have to use language? They might have to compare and contrast. Danilo's response is rather good on this. How do you think um, the ways in which people spend their leisure time have changed uh, since 100 years ago? Um, I think it's, um, it's changed a lot. Um, Maybe 100 years ago, people didn't have, uh, didn't used to have um, we, um, weekends off or anyway days off, so they didn't have um, much free time to spend in um, doing some leisure activities. Whereas now life is much easier. I mean, um, people have two days or at least one day off, so can, they can spend um, a lot of time doing um, relaxing activities such as um, going to cinema, having a walk from time to time or go shopping around, shopping around when they have a chance. He uses whereas to express contrast. Daniel does answer this question but his response is very disjointed and it's not easy to see the grammatical structure. What's the difference? It depends because of uh, technology was developing and uh, so maybe 100 years ago without television and uh, they, without DVD, without CD, without computers, they spend a lot of time with, uh, with uh, their family and, uh, and now Another thing a candidate may be called on to do is to hypothesize. Hypothesize? Yes, to imagine a situation which doesn't exist in reality, to imagine what would happen if things were different from what they are. Let's watch an example. Penelope, how do you think people would react if there was no TV? Um, well, I think they would be quite shocked because, uh, well, I never had a life without a TV, so I, I would be quite surprised and it would be uh, shocking, shocking news. Um, what would be a problem would be that we're used to getting news and stuff uh, really quickly and we wouldn't be able to do that. I mean, you wouldn't get to know that the TV was out before the newspaper came out the day after and that would be a bit late because... Uh, Today, the society is um, moving quite quickly, so that would not be good. 
also, um, well, if it, if it happened like for a long period of time, you would probably go back in kind of back in time and start um, start playing games again with your families and go out and uh, see uh, blue sky and uh, take some fresh air. And um, we would probably go back to what we used to do, going to a theatre and uh, playing football with friends, even though we're grown up and don't usually do that anymore. Um, but I think people would panic a bit and also a lot of people would lose their work. So, um, so yeah, so many people would uh, be out on a dough. That's not good. Yes, she used wood consistently, didn't she? In a second conditional construction. Now listen to Daniel. What do you think would happen if the government banned overtime? Oh, it's terrible. If, if they had banned overtime, I think that people would uh, do a black business. We call that black business. So I think that uh, employers would uh, use the employee for for our time, so I think that it's it's useless to, to ban that. Now, let's listen to Boya. What would happen if the government said that people can work as long as they wish? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's a good, good thing, because people have rights and they don't want to work all, all their lifetime. They have time to relax, to leisure, to spend with their children or with their parents. Mm -hmm. So I think it has a um, retired age to, for people to retire, yeah. She doesn't really answer the question, does she? She thinks I mean people should be forced to work all their lives, whereas I suggested that they should be allowed to. Then there's something else they might have to do speculate about the future. What form does Danilo use to do this? I think it might be popular in the future um, going to a gym or anyway taking a gym sports mm -hmm. um, such as going to um, as I said to a gym or swimming or running. Mm -hmm. Okay so do you think that more and more people will take this up? Yeah, it's already, I think it's already happening now. Um, many people go to, um, to a gym before going to work, maybe in the, in the, first, uh, in the first morning, about seven o'clock, or after they, um, they worked. Right? He uses might. Yes, though that's also the form I use in my question. He might also have used terms like Maybe, perhaps, in all probability, what seems likely is, etc. And any other language they should concentrate on? Yes, they need to use signpost words, words which indicate what is ahead or coming, what kind of thing the speaker wishes to say, perhaps reason or result, or an example, or to point out some kind of contrast. Let's listen to Panil. So do you think the quality of life these days is worse than it used to be? Well, the quality of life is definitely better in in theory because because now we we live longer and we don't uh we're not as sick uh, as they used to be. If you get a disease now, you can be cured. She uses because. However, this is a very common word. So we're looking for terms like since, as, seeing that, or the reason is. For result, of course, there's so, or so that, or verbs like cause, or lead to. And in this clip, Panil uses some quite advanced vocabulary. Of course, entertainment is a very big industry these days. Um, what kind of um, impact does that have on our lives? Well, um... I think all people are, in some way or another, are um, um, affected by by the entertainment industry. She uses affected by. Yes, and she could have also used words like impact or influence. 
Now, in this clip, Daniel introduces an example. Let's take the opposite of leisure, that is, work. Um, do you think employers should encourage employees to work overtime or discourage them from doing it? I think that they could be, uh, encourage them, but it depends uh, of the work as well. Because, for example, if I'll do my work over my, during my, my normal hours, so, and I'm not able to do everything, and I will be, I, I will do hard work. So then I, I have to, I have to take overtime as well. So I will uh, expect from my boss that uh, he will encourage me, or maybe he will help me. Mm -hmm. Yes, he uses for example, but we can also use such as or for instance. Or an example is, let's take as an example, etc. You also mentioned contrast. Danilo used whereas earlier to express this. Yes, um, what does he use here? Do you think that people generally have enough leisure time? No, I personally think that um, nowadays people don't have a lot of free time and they, um, uh, many people are workaholic and they prefer to spend their time working. But uh, in the other hand, there are other people who like to, to have more leisure time, but they can't because they, um, they, have, they have a lot of fees to pay. Mm -hmm. So they spend more time working rather than having free time. On the other hand, except he said in the other hand. Exactly. Something else, although we haven't got any examples, is to outline your response. For example, there are two things I can say about this. It might be helpful to watch a whole interview now. Well, here's Boya. As you watch, think about those general criteria, fluency and coherence, vocabulary, grammatical accuracy and range, and pronunciation. To take the last point, how does she pronounce the word busy, B-U-S-Y, in part two? Does she make an effective use of stress and intonation? But above all, is she clear enough? In part one, are her responses extended enough or too brief? Does she use fillers to give herself time to think? Yes, and in part two, does she continue as confidently as she started? Also, maintaining eye contact is very important. Not staring at the examiner, but glancing towards him on keywords which she wishes to stress. And in part three, I'll look out for how she expresses her opinion or compares and contrasts, speculates or hypothesises. And don't forget the use of signposting. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is um, Reynold Barnicott. Can you give me your full name, please? My full name is Boya Liu. I see. And um, what can I call you? Um, you can call me Boya. Uh -huh. And where do you come from? I come from China. Well, I'm going to start by asking you some questions about yourself. Okay. Um, first of all, about your studies. What are you studying? Uh, now I'm studying Diplomming Foundation Studies in Metropolitan University. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you intend to study at Metropolitan University in future? Um, probably media. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose that subject? Because um, I wanted to choose because I like to be a producer in the future and to do some programs for people. Okay. Um, what do you find most interesting about your subject? Um, I think is produce programs, mm. the process when, when I do it. And I think I can find some interesting things in it. Um, do you enjoy being a student? Yeah. 
Is there anything that you don't like in your studies? Oh, homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on to talk about newspapers and magazines. Okay. Um, which newspapers and magazines do you read? You mean in English or Chinese? In or, English. Okay. In English, um, when I stay in London, probably read Metro because it's free mm -hmm. and I can take it from the tube. Okay. Which part of a newspaper do you turn to first? Um, probably entertainment. Why? Because I don't like to be something very political things. Mm -hmm. I want to see something very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any part of a newspaper that you don't read? Um, things about politics. I see. Okay, let's move on to music. Um, yeah. Do you play a musical instrument? Yeah. What What do you play? Um, piano. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What is your favorite kind of music? Um, all kinds. If I like it, I think it's all beautiful music. And but especially as classic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. What kinds of music are most popular where you come from? Uh, now in China is pop music. Mm -hmm. Yes, and lots of pop stars sing pop songs. Okay. Do you think it's better to listen to live music or recordings? Um, I think for me, I think it's better to listen to record music because it's better. Mm -hmm. But I think if you want to be a good singer, it's better to have a live music, and it can show your um, show your skills of the music and your voice. Okay, let's move on. Yeah. Um, so the next part, I'm going to ask you to talk about a topic. Okay. Um, for one or two minutes. Um, Firstly, um, you will have one minute to prepare the topic and write some notes if you wish. Here is some paper and a pencil for your notes. Okay. And this is your topic. Describe how you would like to spend a free day. All right? Yeah. Um, remember, you have only one to two minutes, um, so don't worry if I stop you. Okay. Would you like to start now, please? Right. I'm going to tell you about spending a day with my parents. When I have a free day, I love to be at home with my mom and dad, because I think um, sometimes when I stay at home, it's very little time with them, because I have to go to school. and. These three days, when I'm with my mom and dad, I can talk with them, chat with them, and show what was the life in my schools, and let them know what happened, and what I'm now, and what's the difference between now and past. And I think it's a good way to improve the relationships with parents like this. And after that, I like to listen to the music and to relax myself because, you know, the studies in school are very busy and also very boring. So I want to do some things really can relax me and just forget things in the school. <laughs> and why I like to spend the day like this is, um, first of all, it can relax myself and secondly it can improve the relationship with my parents and thirdly it's um i think it's good for health going up um instead of stay at home so that's all yeah okay um and um do you think you'll be able to um to do this soon um, to spend the day with your parents, as you said? No, I don't think so, because I'm in London, they are in China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So we've been talking about how, or you've been describing how you would like to spend a free day. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask you some more general questions okay. on the same theme. Um, these days, do you think that people generally have enough leisure time? I don't think so, because mm -hmm. these days are more competitive mm. before, than before. So people are more likely to spend time in work, earn much more money to make the life better. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't think you have enough time for them to leisure. Okay. What kinds of leisure activities do you think might be popular in the future? In the future, I think, um, probably stay at home. Mm -hmm. Yes, because they stay at home and do something they want. Don't do things somebody lets you to do. Mm -hmm. It's just, just relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you think that we need um, technology in order to use our leisure time effectively? Uh, technology? <laughs> I don't think so, because, mm. you know, if you, if you use the technology to leisure, mm. probably it will use your brain or use your body to do some sports. I think leisure is just relax, mm. just stay at home and lie on the sofa and watch some TV or something like that. Okay. How do you think people used to um, entertain themselves say a hundred years ago? Hundreds of years ago. Mm. Oh, it's so long time. Mm. When they didn't have television or, um, or, or um, CD players? Probably chat around with mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. they live with and stay at home. Mm -hmm. and do something they, they like mm -hmm. and if, if they're not like to chat with people just stay at home. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, do you think that education influences the ways people spend their leisure time? Education. Um, for me I think yes because mm -hmm. You know, now people want to have more higher educations because they want to get a um, good job, so they don't have much more time for leisure. Mm -hmm. Okay. What effects on society do you think any changes in the ages at which people retire might have? Sorry. Um, well, um, there's talk about changing the law about retirement age, yeah. uh, making it possible for people to retire later. Okay. Um, what effects will this have on society? Oh, so you mean is um, the retired age for people in this society? Yeah. Um, what I know in China is people probably at age 50, mm -hmm. they probably will retire. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's a good age, because you know, now the life is better and better, so the life expense, um, expectancy is longer. So I think it can be 60, mm -hmm. it's better mm -hmm. to retire. Mm -hmm. What would happen if the government said that people can work as long as they wish. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think it's a good, good thing because people have rights and they don't want to work all all their lifetime. Mm. They have time to relax, to leisure, to spend with their children or with their parents. Mm -hmm. So, I think it have a um, retired age to for people to retire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, going back to entertainment, um, are there any forms of entertainment that you disapprove of? Uh, I disapprove of is yes. 
I mean, it's, I, I don't like it. You don't like it? I don't like play video game. No, why not? Because I think it's waste time and mm. better wise. But mm. I like watching TV. Thank you very much. That's Thank the end of speaking test. Yeah. Finally, you might like to hear Daniel, Danilo and Boyer's comments on their performance. It was not bad, but uh, I found the third part um, most difficult, maybe because I I had to answer your question immediately, and the first one was much easier because the, the answer the questions was simple. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, maybe the second part uh, was was fine because uh, I could decide um, maybe one minute and it was enough for me to do some work and some some notes, so that was fine. Actually, I found more harder uh, the last part, the, um, uh, the questions about um, the topic, because uh, they were really uh, detailed and you have to think about, about them in uh, a really deep way. Uh, you have to answer uh, in a completed way. So uh, I definitely found them harder than the, the first part. In part three, and I think some questions are very difficult to understand. Um, well, but I think it's better to re ask, well, you mean it's like that, or just um, to react with the examiner and then make sure the question what it means. Yeah. Thank you for this most useful explanation, Ranald.